was potentially going to be kind of a mundane sort of, oh, Lugia Mirror, mm -hmm. Lugia Mirror, it has turned into something I did not expect, and I am thoroughly loving it. Yeah, <laughs> the players are out here feasting on the Lugia decks. They're, they've brought all of their harebrained schemes and wild decks trying to counter Lugia in every possible way. It's like Piranha out there. They're just trying to get the matchups and the wins and the points wherever they can get them. I felt so bad for Edwin. I, I don't think Edwin's going to be looking at PBJs the same ever again, you know? That emergency jelly, oh, that was so rough <laughs> to watch. And that's not even something I was seeing on radars. I don't think I've yeah. seen that in online tournaments. So there, for sure, is some spice a Bruin out there to take down these Lugias and really capitalize on that standard Lugia list because they do add tons of text here and there. But, you know, with a lack of switching cards and only 60 cards you can have in your deck, people were like, oh, I'm I'm uh, I'm taking a chance here on some uh, interesting tactics to get around these Lugia lists. Yeah, I couldn't have said it better myself. <laughs> the Lugia deck has been around so much and it's been so popular. You just get extra practice against it just as you're playing normal decks or doing a little bit of testing online. And now that just enough time has passed, maybe the players who weren't as confident in their ability to beat Lugia now have put in the time and the reps on their counter decks and are bringing them out here and seeing what they can do in Toronto. Yeah, most definitely. And we are going to be heading into another match soon as well. We are slowly progressing through our day here, of course, in Swiss round five now. So uh, still some interesting, interesting things in the field popping up that are undefeated still. And mm -hmm. we are going to be featuring uh, soon one of those. Can't talk about it just yet until players are all set up and can't hear us speak about it. But it is definitely going to be an interesting match for sure. Yeah, the players are actually set up right now. As we speak, we you go. called it perfectly. <laughs> we can head down to the table. The players are getting shuffled up and just about to jump into game. So who do we have for our match here, Shelby. All right, so I am so excited. Here on the right here, we have Rovin, Rowan Stava now, which uh, is actually a familiar face here. Junior world champion in 2015, has also been playing throughout the 2022 season. Uh, 101st at LAIC, so just comp competed last weekend as well. Eighth place in Milwaukee Regional, Vancouver, 36th place, or sorry, uh, I think it was eighth place in Vancouver, 36th place in Indianapolis. So Rowan has been uh, making the rounds here to these regionals and of course also here in Canada, from Canada. Yeah, a great local uh, resident, just trying to do his best. Meanwhile, we've got uh, Juan Rosales on the other side, also trying to make it work, right? These players are still undefeated very early in the Swiss rounds. Um, it's going to be a long day for these players no matter what, but having this early start 4-0, build up some momentum, build up some confidence. That actually does a long way. Oh, uh, yeah, most definitely. All right, so we... tails. I wonder who's going to go first here. Um, talking about the list, I always love to wait for that first moment where they flip over the Pokemon. Absolutely. Uh, but we've got, of course, a Radiant Box on Ron's, on Juan's side. And then Rowan is on a special counter offense Galarian Weezing deck. Yeah, so Juan is going to be playing a uh, Giratina deck, I believe, here. So we are going to see mm. um, Giratina V-Star and be paired with a lot of one prizers as well. This is a deck people were kind of uh, talking about, is it good, is it not good, couldn't decide, but Juan has chosen to take it. And this is Juan's first time on the stream, too. So welcome to the stream, Juan. Hopefully everything goes super well. But unfortunately, playing against something that is Quite a scene here. Rowan has decided to take a deck that I kid you not only plays uh, four coughing and four Galarian wheezing. That neutralizing gas ability just bullies so many decks out of the metagame directly that that's all you need, I guess. Just triple down on that, <laughs> on that ability. And of course, <laughs> Rowan has no choice but to start with coughing in the active. And Juan getting set up with Cramorant. I think that as soon as Juan sees this uh, coughing, already knows the neutralizing gas is coming, has to take advantage of this right here, right now. If you can't use your flower selecting to get cards into the lost zone, you are just going to be up the creek. Starting off with the Cramorant is actually a huge boon here because we can start manually attaching energy to this 
just to get around the lack of emergency provisions. Yeah, absolutely. But I, I kind of doubt Juan knows that the only thing they're going to be bursting is that Galarian wheezing as well. So there is going to be some spice over on Rowan's side, but of course featuring a lot of really a control style type of deck. We've mm -hmm. seen a lot of those today, actually. Uh, but yeah, definitely featuring a lot of cards like um, Fan of Waves, Crushing Hammer, also a very interesting thing as well. If you thought that there may be a chance for a lone coughing to be around and uh, only have those two, there is a boost shake, actually four of them, in deck here for Rowan as well. So there's potentially no time and a coughing will be seen again because mm -hmm. we're going to have some instant evolutions to continue that lock on abilities, which is going to be huge. So it's going to be a very tough time for Juan, of course, just setting up as best as they can right now using the uh, flower selecting ability and two cards already in the Lost Zone. That's going to be mm. so crucial once you still have the ability to stack those cards in the Lost Zone because that's going to enable so many of your uh, potential attackers in the future. Mm -hmm. The wheezing makes it so hard to get the cards in the Lost Zone, but you can still use Colrus's experiment to see some tools. You still get to use Mirage Gate, uh, maybe try to help out with you know the Radiant Greninja, get some damage down with the Moonlight Shuriken. So there is still potential yeah. uh, for this deck to pop off. I'm also, I've, I also got a small update for the viewers at home. Juan prefers to go by David, actually. So oh, this wow, is going to okay. be David versus Rowan here. Um, but overall, when I saw the attachment to the Cramorant, I was pretty excited. I was like, okay, we're just going to attach, attach, just get a natural attack. I don't think anybody's ever seen three energy attached to a Cramorant before. Um, but no, Juan's just, not. excuse me, David's just getting, the, getting it while the getting's good. Yeah, most definitely. We do have that Radiant Greninja brought up here, which also can be uh, manually attached to for David. Okay, cool. We got that changed up there. So there is still potential for some plays down the line for David, but, you know, like I said, they're seeing that coughing gives you some insight to what you're playing against, but... Uh, still kind of in the dark for what is really in store here on Rowan's side. So now we have three cards into the Lost Zone here, getting all of the uh, potential out of these Comfies as well, these mm -hmm. flower selecting, selecting abilities. Four cards into the Lost wow. Zone, into a chorus. There Beautiful. we go. So many cards in the Lost Zone right off of the bat. Oh wow, and that's actually gonna be Yeah, that's gonna be that's gonna be game because you get the Cramorant attack on turn two. I thought that David was actually yes. the one going was going first, but it was David going second. Oh my goodness, oh, I can't believe I goodness. missed that. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Wow, so David actually play, uh, taking a surprise win for both Holy of us there, Skarzyk. So we, oh that, my goodness. And that means wow. that Rowan missed out on the boost shake, right? That's so important to also just immediately evolve that, yeah. uh, that coughing because even though you can use it immediately, it automatically ends your turn. So I, Yeah, I was 100% uh, thinking that David was going first there, but no, you're 100% right. So David is going to take this game one here going straight into a game two with such speed. Wow. L listen, I think <laughs> that that is... That's it. David just used up all the good luck right there that first game and... We've been talking it up so much, Shelby, that it's yeah. once the Galera Weezing comes online, the Lost Box decks really struggle. Um, but getting that early win gives David so much extra time, a two more chances now to make another miracle like that happen. Even if the Weezing is locking you down, you can't use Flower Selecting, maybe you just get triple or quadruple Colrest's experiment, and then you get your Mirage Gate set up. You know, and then you just attach to Giratina and go from there. Oh, wow, two Flannerys there uh, in the prize cards for Rowan. David has the Giratinas, but I'm not sure how uh, how much that's going to come into play for this match. But, okay, this time Rowan is going first here. All right, now we'll see a real turn Yes. with, yeah. with the level ball here getting another coughing. And this is the other aspect of the deck, right? We can search out this coughing, immediately put it on the bench. And a way that players normally get around the Galarian Weezing is that the neutralizing gas only works when it's in the active spot. So you can use boss's orders to bring up something else from the bench, a second coughing or what have you, in order to use your abilities for that turn. And Rowan automatically is going to try to counter that with the boost shake. 
Also, what's really important is just having more Pokemon on the bench there mm -hmm. so that then we don't see what happens play out in game one for Rowan either. Mm -hmm. um, so that is definitely very important. But I mean, like you were saying before, Skarzig, like we've gotten to this point, both of these players are undefeated so far, 4-0. So Rowan's been hitting some matchups here where this deck has really been playing out and uh, must know exactly what they're doing here. So we will see how they choose to go about this turn. What is in the hand? I haven't even seen the hand here, but it He's looks like... playing it really close to the chest. Yeah, absolutely. But of course, those two level balls getting those coughings. Choosing to only punch one here so far. Uh, the Giratina V actually was the card that David uh, had to start. Not sure if there was choices in hand for that. Doesn't look like it. Oh my gosh, three battle VIP pass though in hand for David there. Yeah, so so all, <laughs> all the single prizers are coming out. Beautiful. And okay. we can see there with the Giratina V has the Abyss Seeking attack, so we can still get some extra cards into the Lost Zone. Again, it's a very small and short window of opportunity right here at the start of the game that we can start getting those cards put down before the Weezing comes out. Even if you don't have the Weezing, Coughing has that Ascension attack. So as long as you can find a Darkness Energy to attach, you can just immediately bring that Weezing right out. But Absolutely. And the thing about Giratina V-Star is that, yes, there is Giratina V and V-Star. That's the title of the deck. But it also has the ability to just function as a lost box deck mm -hmm. as well and go into those single prize attackers, especially if you're playing against another single prize deck. That is definitely something you are going to want to utilize. You kind of just switch gameplay style completely, but also still have those options in other matchups to bring out and really uh, threaten the Giratina V Star Star Requiem in other matches. But as we see, we're going to see ba that Battle VIP pass times two to bring out two Comfies there and a Ranguru and a Radiant Greninja. Yeah, the gang's all here. This is all you need. And I love the inclusion of a Ranguru now making its way into these Lost Zone decks because of your ability to manipulate the flower selecting a little bit more uh, with Primate Wisdom. You can take a card that you don't want from your hand, put it on top, and then send it to the Lost Zone. We saw a lot of the earlier builds get really hairy when they had to make some devastating decisions or sending energy to the Lost Zone when they didn't want to. So this is a great way to really even out the overall flow of the deck. All right, so we did see the first Colrus's experiment here from David. There was another Colrus in there, extremely important here for mm -hmm. David to keep that because, as you've been mentioning, uh, it is very important Ooh, in this matchup. But puts the Colrus in the wow. Lost Zone anyway. David's got a completely different plan. All right, so that is now two cards here in the Lost Zone. For David, opting, uh, did you see, Skarzik, what he chose to actually keep off that? We do have the escape rope yeah, going so in. I guess just has the tools now to get the Lost Zone set up with the Comfy. Wants to get a Cramorant down to take one prize at the very least, it seems. There's a lot of energy in the hand right now for David, so perhaps this does force a pivot to a manual attachment sort of scenario. Oh, yeah, most definitely. I mean, still, at, at this time, too, David doesn't know what else is in the deck from Rowan. So uh, just making sure mm -hmm. that they can kind of line everything up here. That is very true. The first game did not give away any information. No. All you've seen so far is is coughing. Is there some other control going on here? I've seen, uh, we've all seen, I think, like Arceus with coughing or, or coughing with Crobat, et cetera, any other darkness attackers, but this one is going all in. Also, it's going to be really important here from Rowan's, size, uh, from Rowan's side. We haven't seen it yet, but that Galarian Weezing is going to be working with Poison. Mm -hmm. Does severe Poison, your opponent's active Pokemon is poisoned, but you've put four damage counters instead of one on that Pokemon. So that actually... Ooh, another hard choice. Giratina V-Star goes to the Lost Zone in order to save the energy. You can see David's being very specific about getting these energies yeah. in hand, because once that neutralizing gas hits, you have to start manually attaching. Yeah, absolutely. Well, that is your uh, only ability to do so. So that is definitely very essential here. But now we are over on Rowan's side. So let's see. Just oh, passes no, pass. is back. No, no boost weaving. shake. No energy for the ascension attack. We just got coughing chilling here. David has another chance here to get even more cards in the loss zone. So easy to get four right off the bat. Two comfies in the active. Yeah, that's actually really unfortunate there. But of course, we did see uh, now finally one of those Galarian Weezing coming out. And David's actually reading the card here now. We also see that hiding. Did Rowan pass there? I saw the hand gesture. I, I think. Did David just immediately pass right back? It didn't do anything? Uh, I am not sure. Hmm. Okay, I must admit, I, I got way too ahead of myself, everybody. 
Yeah, because now we are seeing two Galarian Weezings down, and okay. David just read the card, so maybe not even super yeah, familiar. Yeah, that gesture might have just been him talking to his opponent or yeah, uh, just so answering a quick question. Wait, what? what's going on over there? Absolutely. So we are going to see... Well, there was a Galarian Weezing. Oh, I think uh, p potentially the judge is just reading in there. I was like, okay, there's a okay. Galarian Weezing, and now it's being snatched okay. up. But yeah. All right, here we go. So there is this Galarian Weezing with the severe poison. So as I said, four damage counters instead of one uh, with that poison. Also, the hiding energy allowing the uh, pivot for Rowan as well into uh, other potential Pokemon on the bench here. And so now things get very yeah, complicated for David. We thought he was going to run away with this game. But now with at least four cards in the Lost Zone, even though your Cramorant is online, but you, now you still have to equip and attach those energies. Crushing Hammer's now coming through. The manual attachment game plan is going to be getting headed off at the pass if we get some heads here. Yeah, so as I said before a little bit at the beginning of the match, David is, uh, or sorry, Rowan is using a lot of control type cards. So we're going to see crushing hammers. Uh, we see the boss here bringing the Giratina V up just to make sure that uh, there's as much disruption as possible uh, for David to have to go through. And uh, Rowan can just capitalize on continuing that lockdown of abilities with the Galarian Weezing. And David to run out of resources, not have the answers to be able to uh, really do anything besides sit there through poison. Yeah, we do have the attachment finally, Giratina V can attack with Abyss seeking to get more cards in the Lost Zone, but it needs three energy to use its other attack, Shred. With two energy attached, we could see perhaps a retreat, but it's not looking good. Yeah, that is definitely for sure. But David um, going through the deck yeah, look. right now. Uh, was it a quick ball for the Drapion? Yeah, just discarded the Drapion. Finds the Sableye, so the plan is still trying to stay on the rails, but it's going to be a long time before you can get 10 cards in the Lost Zone against oh, Double yeah. Weezing. Absolutely, and no, uh, yeah, no abilities uh, to be mentioned there. So as we said before in the, in the last game, Colrus is going to be so important to get those cards continuously into the Lost Zone to enable a lot of your attackers there. But uh, unfortunately, that is just going to mm. be uh, more poison here. Yeah, it's such a shame, right, to see that Giratina V-Star over in the Lost Zone. Rowan going for the Poke Gear here. Just trying to search for more crushing hammers, more disruption. There's also Galar Mine in this deck, yeah, if I was I'm not about mistaken, to say, just to yeah. make absolutely sure that this uh, Giratina V can't get out of the active. Uh, David can maybe hopefully find an escape rope or something. Yeah, most definitely. That is going to be what that option has to be for David because, uh, yeah, if once Galar Mine comes down, that is just one more hurdle that David has to jump through in order to uh, to pivot around here. But we are going to see that energy attachment there onto the Giratina V that has still still poisoned with all that damage on it as well. Yep, so that now with three tough. energy attached, I mean, we can finally use Shred. Yep. Start getting some knockouts, but now the Giratina is going to be slowly ticking down due to this poison. Yeah, what David needs to just start focusing on right now, honestly, is just getting these knockouts on these Galarian Weezings. So any sort of attacker that could be lined up here to consistently take these knockouts. Of course, like you said before, Skarzig, the loss is at six now, but in order to enable that loss mine, um, it has to be at 10. So that is not in the works right now. Of course, there's that Radiant Greninja mm -hmm. that can hit um, the, uh, or well, it does 90 to two Pokemon, mm -hmm. uh, which is very important. And of course, Rowan doesn't play any other Pokemon uh, in this deck besides the Galarian Weezing and the Coughings. So there is no mana fee to be found here. And we are going to see the elimination here of that first Galarian Weezing hitting that discard pile for Rowan. All right, so one Weezing down, Coffin gets promoted, and there's the boost shake to get another Weezing. This immediately just ends the turn, but it just maintains this lock. And four more counters going onto the Giratina V, thanks to that severe poison. 
Yeah, it's really unfortunate here for David, just kind of at the mercy of drawing the top deck and mm -hmm. hoping for switch outs here from that Giratina V. To have to give up two prize cards to Rowan is going to be very, very crucial, unfortunately. Yeah, in this you can match. see David double checking there. Yeah. Is there six cards in the Lost Zone? Can I Mirage Gate? If we can yes. get to seven, the Mirage Gate does turn this Radiant Greenwich into a threat. We have some other maybe Giratina V ideas that we can pivot into, but David did a little bit of work so far with the Weezing, but can we get there, Shelby? I don't know. Honestly, Skarzig, I was not preparing to see this matchup today, <laughs> and this is just an absolute thrill to be watching right now. So here we go. We are One going to see. One more prize card. That yes. is the Coresis experiment coming to the hand by David for David, but Giratina dies eventually to the poison, gets knocked out. Yep, that is a knockout there. So Rowan is going to go down two prize cards here, but uh, just a lone Galarian wheezing in the active position. So now we're going to see Rowan's deck, how it really functions here and rescues uh, themselves from this position. So we are starting off with that Colrus's experiment. Yeah, so double checking the, di the discard pile. We've seen this time and time again as well, where Colrus's experiment, being able yep. to see five cards is just a good supporter to run in your deck, especially these control decks where you just need to see the tools. You kind of already know and have it mapped what you don't need for that particular matchup. So you don't mind putting things in the lost zone. And here it is, trekking shoes into trekking shoes. What is yeah. Rowan looking for here? Even gets rid of the Silene. Yeah, I was about to say, discarding that Silene, taking another card, digging through the deck, um, probably trying to get something here uh, onto the bench, I would assume, here from Rowan, just to try to stay in the game uh, layout. I didn't see what was in the hand here for Rowan, but just making sure. Yeah, the, the hand must be really good, right, to not even want any of the th those other supporters. It's trying yeah. to find something very specific. I mean, getting more crushing hammers would be great. Yeah, for just sure. Just to keep these Giratinas at bay. The Mirage There's Gates are going to become an issue. Um, yeah, so Fan of Waves is in this deck Ooh. as well as Flannery, which is for special energy, but unfortunately here for Giratina, it is playing uh, basic energy. Gotcha. So that's actually not applicable. So a lot of the cards that are actually in Rowan's deck are not even applicable to this matchup per se. So definitely searching for just more disruption cards. Um, like you said, the Crushing Hammer would be huge. There's also two Yellhorn in this deck that we could potentially be seeing later on. But David is now going to have the Giratina V in the active position here. Did get that Colrus, so we're going to see that. And so, of course, we're going to have uh, some more cards hit the Lost Zone here for David, which is going to get that Mirage Gate, and there is the game for David taking down that Galarian Weezing deck. First time on stream and taking the win. I'm sure David feels so happy right now. That Mirage Gate coming in clutch. And let me, you can already see Rowan is just really hilarious. He's just, he's so happy to just play this deck on stage and to show someone that his sort of wild brew has been able to kind of take it so far now in the Swiss rounds. That was a matchup that we thought was going to be very one-sided in favor of the Galarian Weezing, but that window of opportunity at the beginning of the game, Rowan just was not able to capitalize, getting that really unfortunate loss super early in the first game, because you're only running four coughing and four wheezing, so you couldn't get that bench set up. And then in game number two, once those coughings got brought into play, they didn't evolve quickly enough. Yeah. So being able to get that initial start of three or four cards into the lost zone, just a couple of core experiments away of getting Mirage Gate and Giratina carried. Well, and what uh, Rowan's deck, I think this was a matchup that was kind of difficult to be mm -hmm. going into, not only for, um, you know, the Flannery, the, the, there's no special energy on your yeah. opponent's side, so you don't get to utilize a lot of those disruption cards that would be used in a lot of the other fields matchups. Uh, matchups that Rowan may have already faced to get to the point of being uh, that 4-0, now going to be 4-1. So mm -hmm. that was kind of a difficult thing. Definitely not a matchup I was uh, expecting to be casting over, Skarzik, that is for sure, but definitely